Right, it's the next day now. I've built the Pi Storm. I've put my Raspberry Pi 3B into it. So now I need to put some software on it. I need to put the code I need on, on this so that it will basically just boot up as a basic accelerator. So I'm going to take that out. Put that to one side. Now obviously I'm going to need one of these. And then I'm going to want this so I can plug it into the computer and download the code. Right, so I've got that. And I need a computer. So let's see if we can do it on the Mac. Because I just find it really convenient using this for anything with an SD card. Right, so we've got the card in. Let's plug it into the Mac. Oh, it does recognise it. I did wonder if it would recognise it. Right. I need to format it. Because it's got to be FAT32 formatted. Right, so I'm just going to get the software by going to the Amiga Kit site onto the PyStorm page. And then it's got this link to the wiki page. Now we've got two versions PyStorm or PyStorm 32 Lite. Well, I've got that one, so I guess I download that. Right, after a bit of digging, I found my Amiga Forever ROMs. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be this one. OS 3X A1200 ROM. Well, let's copy it over and find out. And I've got to call it. Uh, I think I've got to call it kick.rom. Kick I have to call it kick.rom. If you're not to wish to use kick.file, make sure you hash out the init file. Uh, so I can get away without it, but I'll try it with this kickstart. So this needs to be called kick.rom. Right, I think that's all I've got to do. Right, we can put this to one side for the moment. And we're going to want this again. Right, so that is the Pi, and we need to put the card back in, and then we should be away. Right, so we'll take this out. And then, in it goes. Right, we're in. So now this should be fully tooled up. Right, so the first thing to do before I put the uh, the Pi Storm in is to make sure it still works okay, because I haven't used it in a while. And as we can see, we've got a power light and we're on. And that is my current, my current RAM. So that's a standard two meg and a four meg expansion. Right, let's show the config first. So this is what I have at the moment. Right, so this is basically where I'm at at the moment. We'll do the usual speed test. And that's where I am. Right, so this is Amiga Doom, which I've not been able to run on this since I've had it. Um, so that's my current RAM. And if I try and launch it, it's not gonna like it. I just don't have enough juice. So that's one thing I do wanna try and run on this. Right, I think it's time to put it in. All right, here's my very, very yellow Amiga. All right, 
so. Right, that is my my actual actual accelerator for Meg. 68020. I've not actually taken it out of this in quite some time, so hopefully it will just come out. So let's find out. Oh, it's going. You're probably not supposed to push it by that chip. That. Oh, oh, it went. Didn't it? Hopefully nothing broke, but it went. Right, this card's actually in really well. I don't remember taking the case off to get it out, but... Oh, there we go. There we go. That is the... That's a genuine Amiga accelerator. Not that the Python's not a genuine one, but, you know. That is... That's the... My existing one. And then that is... The Python. make sure our rubbery stuff is doing its job. One final look at it. Right. Well, that goes in considerably easier than the uh, than the other one did. Let's see. Oh. That was almost too easy. That did require a bit more effort than I wanted to put on from that angle, so I've just stood it up on its side and shoved it in, and it feels like it's in there now. Right, here we are. It's installed now. Um, and I've just got to flip that switch to find out if I've put it in right and done everything right. Wouldn't it be nice if it just worked first time? Wouldn't it be nice? power. That's always a good thing. Right, moment of truth. And that said I've got zero other memory then, didn't it? Right, well that's clearly not working. <laughs> Alright, that didn't work the first time, and I've just double checked the the um, SD card, and it was showing nothing on it. So just to be safe this time, I started over, I reformatted it on the PC, re-downloaded the files, and now let's see, see what's going to work, see if this will work. I've had to take the, the Pi out again. Well, that's different. Right, go straight to this error. I'm assuming that's something to do with it trying to boot off of my off of my compact flash. So I've had to find my way into sysinfo. And I can get in that way. Um, and then, yeah, I could do the test. Right, I've now got a significantly faster computer than an Amiga 4000. Way faster than my old 1200 was. Okay, I haven't used this in a while. I'm assuming this is actually my my memory now. So I think this might be working, but I need to I need to sort out my my workbench. All right, I've got some good good news. I might not be booting up into Workbench for whatever issue, but I have managed to find my way in through the trusty old show commands. So, and luckily we have, we have the Swiss Army knife, which is directory opus. All 
Right, and we do indeed have quite a lot of fast RAM now. So, significantly more than started. What is that? Is that 8, 8 meg, 87 meg? I don't know, I don't care. Right, but I can do one important test now. If I go into games one and doom, doom. And we're making more progress than we did with my, my other accelerator. And that's doom. Yep, we have doom on an actual Amiga. So easy to aim with one hand and control with the other on keys. Someone shoot me. Right, after a bit of messing around um, and swapping the micro SD card back and forth, I've worked out that the problem was actually wrong firmware version. Um, I looked to see what the Amiga actually had when it was booting up correctly. Uh, before I put the PyStorm in, and it was, I think it was Kickstart 3, a particular version of Kickstart 3. And I think that the version I was trying to use is actually 3.1, and it wouldn't boot up with that. So now, after a lot of messing around, I even took the Amiga apart and cleaned it out and just did everything I could. But now, we should actually have the Amiga booting up and using the Pi Storm and using my compact flashcard, um, the OS. There's no error about the SCSI device. That was just caused by the particular Kickstart version that was on there. And here we go. I now have actually a gigabyte of RAM. I thought my Pi 3B only had 512, but it's actually got a gigabyte. So that's all good. And there we go. So it's recognizing the Pi Storm. I'm getting the CPU boost. I'm getting the extra memory. Um, and I don't have to do it through directory opus. So that is that. Right, now we can run Doom on the Amiga. I do want to do more than this with it, but let's just start with with this. And there we go. running on my Amiga 1200. Finally. Right. Just so you know I'm not faking it. Right, that's me happy. Right, just to um, sum up, and this might help people out if they get the same problems I did. I made two mistakes in this video. The first one was I copied the Kickstart ROM into the downloaded zip file, but I never actually copied it onto the micro SD card. I actually watched the video back and realized what I did. That's why it didn't work the first time. The second problem I had was, in fact, an incompatible Kickstart version. Uh, my Amiga 1200 originally had Kickstart V3 
39.106 which is Kickstart 3.0 and the, the Kickstart ROM on the Pi Storm was Kickstart 45.66 which is a very very recent version of 3.1 like a modern, like, like you know, Colanto sort of era. So the version that actually worked for me was the 40.68, which is actually Kickstart 3.1, so it's still a slight upgrade for my Amiga, but for whatever reason, um, it didn't like going higher with my Workbench, maybe it's my Workbench version, I guess, more than likely the case, I suppose. But that was the problem for me. So if you get this uh, SCSI device version 43 early resident error, it may be you've got a similar problem and you need to change the kickstart version because that at least was was the problem for me. Um, I think I probably made this a bit hard work for myself but I do quite enjoy messing with Amiga stuff when I get the chance and this has been quite a fun experience. Slightly frustrating but quite fun at the same time. Um, and I'm sure I will be back fiddling with the Amiga again shortly.